Hi friends, it's Amy and I'm your sewing teacher and I'm here for this Christmas holiday to share with you a special project. During COVID times, getting out with your little one to have pictures with Santa was something that's a little bit difficult. But all you really need to do is do a little DIY and get yourself a DIY Santa suit. So watch with me as I make a do-it-yourself Santa suit. Have a Merry Christmas! This weekend's project is actually a Santa suit. The Santa suit is for a friend of mine whose little son is two years old and she wants to keep the continuum of Santa photos going. So we have this Santa suit coming to her so that she can arrange for a Santa visit for her son. And so I wanted to explain to you why this is a great project. I am using a pattern, I believe it is, um, let's see, oh, there it is, okay. It is a McCall's costume pattern for Santa Claus. It is M5550, and we are doing this picture over here, which is the B picture, and that's the full Santa. And this Santa suit is meant to be made out of a more woven fabric, but my friend asked me if I could do it for her, and I said I could make you something that resembles Santa's PJs because I have a gigantic roll of dead stock red fleece. So it is knit, so it is a little bit difficult to make something like a suit out of this um, without interfacing the whole thing. But because this is something that she wanted to do on the fly um, and we're trying to do this as low waste as possible, this is what she's gonna get. So she's getting Santa PJs. The furs also recycled from another project. Now I am what's called a low waste or zero waste sewist. That means that every time I sew, all of the scrap that I have left over gets reused in another project or it becomes stuffing for another project. Um, I don't throw anything away. Nope not at all. <laughs> if I don't use it at home with my custom stuff, then I will actually take it to school and we'll use it at school for um, a project with my students. So this is the low footprint Santa suit. And I'm really hoping my friend enjoys it. I'm going to finish up the um, fur trim on the jacket and then I'm going to work on the pants and then we're gonna see if we can get this to her tomorrow. Stay tuned. So I'm gonna start with you guys to show you um, the fastenings that I'm using for Santa. I'm actually just using regular Velcro. This is um, the loop kind and this does not have any sticky on the back. Whenever you're sewing I suggest you don't use the sticky kind of velcro because what it actually gums up your needle and you don't really want that. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these together and make sure that they're even and that way I know that I'm cutting the exact same size for each one. So I'm just going to do a one by one square And Santa's pretty long, so I think I'm just going to do like eight of them. Okay, so here are my squares. I'm going to take one square. I always want to make sure that I always put the same square type of Velcro on one side. So if it's the loop side, always put the loops on the same side and put the fuzzy side on the other side. So here we go. At this point, I'm sure you're wondering, uh, how did you get to the coat? didn't you want to show us how to make the coat? Unfortunately, I lost the footage for the first part, so I am just going to continue. The coat is made partially. We're going to finish it up with the Velcro and show you how to put on the trim, but the actual coat, you'd have to follow your instructions in your costume pattern. Okay, so now I've just trimmed all of the 
Santa fur around the Velcro so it doesn't gum up the Velcro. I think that that's important. Now fluff, this kind of Santa fluff is the worst to work with because what you always end up with a whole bunch of fluff attached to the garment and attached to <laughs> your socks and your body and uh, your whole room has fluff everywhere. So this is, as I said, this is a recycled piece. So this is not the first time I've worked with this stuff. I'll tell you, but so that's my first one. And then I'm just going to go right down the line. I'm always going to be aligning it with the top stitch on the facing. And I'm going to do eight of these. So now I've actually done all of the Velcro on one side and part of the Velcro on the other side. This is... um. A, an actual measuring tool that I use quite a bit. Yeah, I really like it because I can I can set it to whatever I, the measurement is and then I know what I need it for next. So right now I'm on my fifth Velcro piece. So I've just put the fifth one in. So I go to the other side of the jacket. I count one, two, three, four, five. And I actually measure from the fifth one to the sixth one with my gauge and I mark it with the red. Then I come back to the other side and I take my other Velcro piece and I lay it right where the red gauge is. And then I know that that's exactly where the other Velcro piece is attached. Then I line everything and I go forwards. Now, if you're a beginner, be sure to pin. So next I'm actually um, just sewing the fur trim on the bottom of Santa's suit. And I actually put the fur on the bottom of the fabric because I felt like it would be, um, there'd be less obstructions of fur, I guess, in the foot. So I'm actually just laying it on top and I'm just using my finger to see where my foot should go and I'm just keeping it straight. I'm using my um, guide on my sewing machine so that I know where I am and that I'm always going straight. So next I'm actually gonna do the same thing as I put the fur onto the sleeve this time. Now I'm not actually gonna sew where the ends meet. Um, I'm actually just going to let them overlap a little bit and then I will sew straight down just to make sure that it, it's attached really well. Again, I am just gonna go to the inside and I'm gonna use my finger to feel, to make sure that I have that I am actually sewing on the right spot. I, I could possibly attach this to the bottom and flip it out, um, but I feel like the sleeve would be extremely long in that manner, so I just decided to just attach it here. So now that this is, the fur trim is now sewn on at one point, um, I'm going to have to sew it on at the bottom as well. But I wanna show you just a little trick about when you cut fur. Cutting fur is a real messy, um, messy, messy thing. So I just wanted to show you that when you cut it, if you actually just put your tips of your scissors in right where you wanna cut, and just cut all the way along, just at the woven part, so that you're not actually cutting any of the little white fur flip uh, pieces. 
and then you don't have a giant furry mess. <laughs> Go all the way along the bottom of the fur, make sure that that fur is on there really well. And there it is. Santa has some trim on his sleeve. Very good. I am definitely going to need to use a lint brush after this just to clean Santa's suit off. Now I'm going to move on to the other arm and I'm going to do it exactly the same way that I just did that arm. So next is Santa's cap. It is right side to right side together. And then I'm just going to sew straight down the line. And then I'm gonna add some trim and then Santa's hat will be finished. So for the cap, I actually am going to attach this so that it flips over. I'm going to start with the seam and I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch over the seam so I can attach those together later. Now, as I sewed this, I realized that it wasn't long enough. So I'm actually just going to sew on an additional piece so that I can continue it. That will be at the back of the hat and no one will see it anyway. So I'm going to continue to sew that on there and then I can finish it properly. And we have a Santa hat. Now this Santa hat's going to be pretty big. So I want to make sure that the person wearing it can adjust it. So I'm going to put in a tie at the back so that it can be adjusted. So I'm going to cut two pieces of ribbon on either side of the seam in the back. I'm going to attach the ribbon to my seam allowance so that it can't be seen from the outside. And then I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Just so on first go, here is the Santa hat without the adjustment in it. And it's really quite large, but it is meant to be a one size fits all because I don't know um, the size of the person who's gonna be wearing this. So I actually put the tie in so then it can be put on and tied at the back in a bow and then tack 
tucked back up into the hat and then from the front you can't even see that that Santa hat's a little bit too big so there, like so so there's the Santa hat I don't look very good in Santa hats oh well what I have to figure out is I have to figure out how am I going to do a pom-pom and I'm not so sure about how I'm going to do that pom-pom yet but we'll see Anyway, I'm still shedding. <laughs> it's from all the cutting. I just keep shedding. I already defluffed the jacket. Oh, can you see? Oh yeah, that's what it looks like when you make a Santa suit. Um, so, um, good thing I don't have allergies to this. So the Santa jacket's already been defluffed. Um, but I'm sure that I'm going to run into troubles with that fluff everywhere again. So I'm just going to tell my friend, make sure that she has herself a lint brush. Anyway, I have to go let my dogs out because they've been barking this whole time because they're wanting to go outside. Actually, it might be dinner time and I have to call one of my children to go do that because my children are in charge of the dogs. See ya. So the Santa pants, the pattern had a faux fly. So I actually cut this to, to have a faux fly, but I decided that our Santa A doesn't need pockets and B does not need to have a faux fly. So I'm actually going to just sew up the front and the back of the pant. So this is the, um, the front of the pant. So I'm just gonna sew this quickly. And I'm going to omit the faux fly because Santa doesn't need to have a faux fly. And then I'm just going to cut that so we don't have a lot of bulk in our seam allowance. And that will be added to my scrap pile. And of course the scraps go into stuffing if they're small. And my dogs are joining me today in the fact that they are making a lot of noise. But anyway, so the way that this pattern called for the pants, and this is really hard for me to show you, was that the pant pattern was one big piece for the side. So there's actually no side seam in these pants. So I put them together. I sew the front. I put them together. I show this, I sew this seam at the back, which is the bum. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Just sew that up. So once those are sewn, I actually have to open it up so that the front and the back align. So there you see the front and the back and the side seams, there aren't any because the, the way that the pattern was drawn. So now all I have to do is sew the inseam. So I'm going to put the pant together at the bottom and I'm actually going to pin this this time actually I'm not going to pin it I'm going to use wonder clips but I am going to clip it every so often because with the type of fabric like I did say that this is meant to be a woven pattern um, use woven fabric for it it's not supposed to have a great deal of stretch and because I am using fleece there is a great deal of stretch and I really don't want it to stretch while I'm sewing it because then things will be askew and that's not really what I want to do. So I'm just going to continue and I'm going to use my wonder clips and then I can get started with my pants. So here we go. This is currently the inseam. I 
at the seam here. I always want to make sure that my seams are lying flat so that I don't have a lot of bulk there. So we go right over top. There we go. And I actually like to do a reverse stitch over it because that's this kind of spot that lends to wear and holes. If they're going to come apart, that's where they come apart. So I always like to reverse stitch over that. So here we go. And I'm going to continue my inseam down the other leg, making sure that everything is still aligned. And it is with my wonder clips. And that is great. And there we go. So next I'm going to see about doing a waistband. And this is going to have an elastic in it. Or maybe it'll have a drawstring. I haven't decided. Which is the front and which is the back. And because I took the pockets off of these pants, I can't see on first glance. So the way you t you see it, what the front is and what the back is, is because the back has a higher uh, or is longer because it has to go around the curve of our rear end. So it actually has the curve built in and you'll see that your shorter one is the front. So we're actually going to do a little buttonhole in the front because I want to be able to put the drawstring through the buttonhole. So today's a lazy Sunday. So today I'm actually going to cheat on my buttonhole. I'm actually going to set my um, machine to a regular auto buttonhole. And actually maybe, hmm, I think I'm just going to do it myself and I'm not going to do it with a buttonholer. So I'm going to just do all of the things that the buttonholer would do. And this is because I'm in a rush and I know how to do a regular buttonhole with a buttonholer. So I'm going to do it without the buttonholer. So here we go. So there's my little buttonhole and it is possible to do a buttonhole without a buttonhole foot. I wouldn't suggest people try it, but for someone who, like myself that has a little experience, it is possible. And there's the second buttonhole. And you'll see I have two buttonholes right where I want them. And that's going to be, when I turn over my pants like that, that's going to be where the drawstring comes out. So now I'm just going to sew my drawstring casing. So I'm going to flatten those out. And I'm going to fold it over. Actually, I'm going to run it through the serger first. So now I'm going to sew my casing shut. So once it the drawstring is fed through and I then put on a toggle and our Santa is all ready to go. Just turn it right side out. And that's it. Hi everybody. So I finished my Santa suit and I really wanted to explain to you why I am making a Santa suit. I am a costume designer for community theater. And the woman who asked me to do the Santa suit is my director. 
we take care of a lot of the children's um, shows. And in the past couple of years, we've done Charlie and Chocolate Factory, Little Mermaid. Um, we did Elf Jr. And we also did um, James and the Giant Peach Jr. And so these costumes that I make for her are mostly from scratch almost always from fabrics that I have found because budget, as you know, in community theater is very small. So she's asked me to do this and I thought, you know what? I wanna do this for her if I can. And as I said before, this is com completely from fabrics that I had on hand because they were dead stock or they were left over or they were recycled. So everything about this is low footprint, which is fantastic. And it's something that she can use year to year if she chooses and something that she can lend to other people also. So I wanted to tell you about Christmas and me. So I am huge about Christmas. I love Christmas. However, Halloween and Christmas are kind of hand in hand and one might be better than the other, but I'm not so sure exactly. Um, I am keen on Christmas so much so that my children get on my case because I start to watch um, Christmas movies in November and I do a Christmas movie a day starting in November. My Halloween costume, I mean my Halloween costumes and and decorations are, are put away right away. I wait until after Remembrance Day which is November 11th in Canada and then I get going on Christmas. Now I don't decorate for Christmas until the last weekend in November. So I don't think that I am that out of control, but I'll tell you, my children think I am, but that's okay. They love me anyway. And I was able to make a Santa this year, which makes me extremely happy. So thanks for sewing with me today and looking at Santa um, and my Santa suit and my low waist, low waist Santa. And here it is. Here's your finished Santa suit. Thanks for stopping by and watching the tips and tricks on how to finish the Santa suit just in time for Christmas. Wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. If you haven't already given this a thumbs up and you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And subscribe below if this is something that you would like to see more of. And go back and check out some of my other videos. 